One of the largest wildfires in the history of California is happening right now. So what causes wildfires? How can we prevent them? And should we even try? Anthony here for D News, and a wildfire that started in Stanislaus National Forest on the 17th has spread into Yosemite National Park and is now the largest wildfire on record in the Sierra Nevada region of California. And while the fire's been spreading quickly, it's managed to stay out of the way of nearby towns, power lines, and even San Francisco's water reservoir, thanks in no small part to control efforts by firefighters. But what causes wildfires, and should we be attempting to control them at all? Wildfires can be ignited by any number of things, lightning, improper maintained campsites, discarded matches or cigarettes. Once a fire starts, it burns and spreads based on whether it continues to have oxygen, heat, and fuel. Those factors are usually called the fire triangle. The heat and oxygen just come from weather conditions. The California landscape actually provides the perfect fuel too. A lot of underbrush, smaller dead trees, grassy fields, leaves and twigs. After giant wildfires in 1910 and 1930 that combined destroyed about 55 million acres of land in the US, the Forestry Service adopted a policy of suppressing all forest fires. It's a policy that continued until the 90s when we started realizing that wildfires just kept getting bigger and costing more and more to fight. Right now, it costs the US about $3.5 billion a year to fight fires, about three times what it cost in the 90s. So what happened? Well, by trying to fight every forest fire, we actually made them more likely to happen, and to happen huge. Forests and the life in them actually evolved to integrate fires into how they live. Fires clear out dead and weak trees and plants, and they burn them into ash, which is good for the soil. Certain trees, like the bishop pine or the sequoia, have evolved in such a way that their seed cones won't open unless they're heavily heated. So fire comes, leaves ash that makes the soil fertile and gives clear access to sunlight, the pods open up, and new trees are planted. Sequoias even have thick layers of fire-resistant bark. Studies of past wildfires show that animal populations in forests aren't greatly affected by them, and some animals, like the three-toed woodpecker, only live in burned sections of forests. By not allowing wildfires to spread, weak trees started taking up space, dead leaves and trees started piling up, grass started dying, and eventually, we just started stockpiling fuel for bigger and bigger wildfires. Now the Forestry Service uses techniques like planned fires, called controlled burns or prescribed fires, to help clear out unhealthy parts of the forest, and anything less than a major wildfire isn't contained unless they could be dangerous to homes or towns. Unfortunately, as populations have risen and spread out of city centers, we're building more and more on the borders of forests that are prone to wildfires. The biggest problem in the case of this latest fire is that planned clearing of the Stanislaus National Forest and Yosemite National Park wasn't done as often as it should have been. Rangers are saying that it's due to underfunding. A controlled burn is an expensive operation, and the money hasn't been there. In the meantime, containment efforts on this fire have been successful so far, thanks to the efforts of over 3,700 firefighters. But without continued policy changes and more funding to our forests and parks, we could be setting ourselves up for more fires like this or bigger in the future. What do you think? Is underfunding making the wildfire problem worse or is there another better solution? Let me know down below and subscribe for more D News.